friends, it is a great pleasure to be here with you today to talk about negotiation and pandemic. Well, how to negotiate in times of coronavirus? Well, I would like to present you a research on 720 Brazilian business negotiations and to derive some conclusions about the new hypothesis and what we, we found here and uh, about how to negotiate in times, in times of pandemic. But first of all, first of all, I ask you to subscribe the channel Professor Murilo Dias in YouTube. You will be very, I will be very grateful, and you will be very helpful. As will assist us on creating new videos for you to subscribe. Well, first of all, the research counted on 720 business negotiations involving uh, 1,440 participants are distributed all, over, distributed all over the five Brazilian regions. 720 negotiations. They were conducted. 364 uh, after the coronavirus pandemic. And 356 before the coronavirus pandemic. But Murilo, tell me something. Well, this, this group these uh, both subgroups they are not um, even uh, they are not the same uh, can I investigate different groups yes you can investigate different groups uh, no matter um, the size of the group if only if the sample is independent therefore the 364 negotiations they don't have nothing to do with the 356 negotiation. This, this said, I can investigate uh, asymmetric groups. This is one point. But uh, what's the difference about both groups? Well, what, what, what can we uh, point as a difference from negotiating before and after the pandemic or during the pandemic? The point is, uh, before the pandemic, the negotiation negotiators they would apply to uh, some role play simulations they read they prepared minimally or, or zero zero preparation and the guys negotiating in the times of pandemic they were assigned a new task to to fulfill a, a, a negotiation map they prepared for one uh, almost one hour, uh, more one hour than, than the other group, and the difference they were astonishing. I will discuss it right now. But first, before first things first, the first thing you have to do is a normality test. Yeah. Well, if if there are, there are two existing ones, if we have a sample uh, with from 30 samples to 100, you use cold Mogorov Smirnov tests. More than 100 samples, Shapiro will test. This is our case, therefore, we did differently. Well, first thing you have to investigate. If you see here the, the normal, the bell curve, the, the, the red one, the red one, well, the normality test will indicate if the data is concentrated here. If the normality test does not uh, run okay, then it means that your sample might not be normally distributed. The inclination slope may be shifted to the left or may be shifted to the right. This is our case. You know, the normality test here, the sample, Shapiro Bloch sample, which provided us a, a P. Uh, it's more than 0.05, which means that distribution is not parametric. Therefore, uh, we cannot use parametric tests and only non-parametric ones. The human Whitney test was required to this case of independent subgroups and not normal results. Well, this is here. This is in Portuguese, but I will translate into there were two variables, dependent variables tested. 
a value deal and the number of options created in the negotiation agreement. In other words, the closing deal, the closing value, uh, and the number of options. And our new hypothesis was, well, no matter if you negotiate preparing yourself or not preparing yourself during pandemics or outside pandemics, the results will be the same. This is a new hypothesis. This is what is called new hypothesis. What is normal? If I don't prepare, no matter if I prepare or not, it doesn't matter. The results will be the same. But in these two cases, these two variables, the pending variable, deal value and options, as you can see here, we had to reject the new hypothesis. Otherwise, the results wouldn't fit. What does it mean here? You can see here the significance, significance, which means the P, which means 0 0.05, is the 95% of confidence interval what, what is very uh, useful for uh, social uh, research, you know? Well, as you can see here, the significance is below 0 0.05, which means that we should reject the null hypothesis, which has implication that, well, there is a, a sound difference between um, pre preparation and non-preparation, insuredness preparation or as I call the structured negotiation. When the negotiation is structured, it is planned, is it is uh, planned with due anticipation, and the, the results are quite different. Yes, we'll be in just just a little investigating the meanings between these two variables, just to compare the results. You know, here it is. Here they are. The confidential interval is 95%, as I said before. And as you can see here in this in this uh, red box, I have the value and options, and the black box structured up, uh, approach in, in the forms of negotiations. And as you can see here, the negotiators who performed the structured negotiations had the due of values 25 28.01% greater than the ones who didn't take any kind of preparation. And the number of options were created around 68, almost 69.9% greater than in the situational group. What does it mean, Murillo? Uh, the point is, when I compare the means, I can't say that prep uh, negotiators, negotiators who invested more time on preparation, they performed better and created more options than the negotiators that they just didn't prepare. They just engaged the negotiation without any sort of systematic and shared preparation. That's a huge point. What proves this? I can say regarding the group the sample we studied, the 720 negotiations that were taking place, they, they took place from 2019 to June uh, 2020. And published in this uh, Global Scientific Journal in this June 2020 uh, as the non-parametric analysis on unstructured resilient business negotiations. Of course, we are dealing with Brazilian business negotiations. Other countries may differ. Other environments, such as buyer-seller negotiation, other and uh, gover governmental negotiation, um, rescue or ransom negotiations, or some different negotiations, mediations, uh, litigations. They can, they may differ in results. But what is the conclusion here, Murilo? The conclusion is the following. Structured negotiation approach is better than situational negotiation approach. This is crystal clear. It reaches a greater value the deals and the number of options. In both cases, I rejected the null hypothesis. Guys, did you like it? Subscribe to the channel and follow me on the research gate.
Well, I'm very glad to welcome you here and welcome in the research gate and as well as at the Instagram and at the YouTube channel. It, it will be my pleasure, my pleasure to present new content on uh, unveiling the negotiation mysteries for you. All right, guys. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.